We're at Impact Economy 2015 with Jeff Clearwater. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, I'd love to have you give us a bit of an overview as to your work with Village Lab. Yeah, we, we do a lot of work with economics, but the economics comes out of a much larger uh, desire to serve a, on a larger level. So uh, Village Lab, basically, um, we use new paradigm economics and new paradigm organizational structures, but our real goal is to develop what we call uh, regen solutions, which is uh, in all four quadrants of, of sustainability, or what we call regenerative design, um, in ecological, economic, political, and social. We are about best practices, about bringing out um, a, a systematic research development and demonstration and replication and dissemination of best practices in all four of those quadrants. So can we back it up yes. and talk about the new paradigm? Yes. Uh, new paradigm economics? Yes, sure. Okay. Sure. Maybe not everyone's going to know what that, what is. that word means. That's so right. that's what this conference is mostly about. So basically, economics that are not based on exploitation, economics that uh, where we, you know, I like to go into a room and say, "What's economics to you?" And most people say, you know, some very dry definition. To us, it's how we take care of each other. It's how we love each other. It's the basic. Uh, it's juicy. You know, we, we use words like psychedelic and sexy to, to de describe economics, because to us, economics is really how we take care of each other. It's the, it's the agreement fields about the most basic human, humane, visceral way we, we connect. So new paradigm economics for us is a way to redefine economics to a much more human face. Mm -hmm. And let's give an example of what that looks like on the ground. Um, well, so, gosh. Um, the so 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 we so here so contracts for instance most people enter into contracts based on litigation and fear they, that's it's very much uh, premature we think in the relationship but if you and I want to do a business transaction why don't we start coming start off with gifting each other and not signing any contracts or making any agreements we just show up and we prove to each other the value we can create for each other and we do it in a fully gifting way. Now that we've established that we can create value for each other and we have total trust built, and we've even, we might even say, oh, it's not a match, and go different directions and we've gifted each other. But we might say, wow, look at all we can do together. Now we could write a conscious contract, which would be a statement of going forward, not going back. It wouldn't be litigation based. Mm -hmm. It would be a contract saying, wow, look at all the opportunities and possibilities that we've discovered in our gifting period in exploring how we could create value for each other. Mm -hmm. So we call that a generosity reciprocity agreement rather right. than an, a contract. Right. And that's a, that's a very real tool that we've developed and we're using businesses. We, 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 that's the tool we use with our clients. Mm -hmm. We don't have clients and, and give them contracts and say sign here and give us a check before we'll work with you. We say, huh, is it, is it a month project? Let's gift for two days. Is it a year project? Let's gift for a week or two and see if we can work together. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a concrete example. Great. Uh, Matt Slater was really interested to hear about the different kind of relationship that you're fostering with what may be known as funders or sponsors. Well, we realized that just in the same way women have been objectified or men, you know, that, that the body has been objectified, how people can become a sexual object, funders become, can become a walking checkbook. And can you imagine the, the personal pain of that you know and that and, and and we all know people that have a lot of money and they deal with that it's they have to be warriors to deal with, with to even carry that money and to know who their friends are mm -hmm. you know the, so money can really corrupt our relationships and if you're if you're always labeled as a funder a philanthropist an investor or you're even an entrepreneur now you're not a walking checkbook but you're a walking idea generator and you're kind of put in that role and now you're you're being extracted that way. And so we walk around in capitalism and we tend to get put in these boxes that then other people can define the extraction uh, technique or the, you know, the relationship is like one of, oh, I can get that from this person. So what we talk about in the funding mechanism is we, we change it to function. So we talk about a funding function and we let people walk in as whole people into a team that is responsible for raising and applying capital. 
Right. And if they happen to have capital to themselves, that's great, but that's not what was as much as what we're interested in the capital. If they can come and bring it in a way where we can be in integrous relationship with them. Yes. So we call it the wealth stewardship circle and it's a way where we've kind of broken the firewall down between philanthropy and investment. And we've even gone further and said, let's talk about functions in an organization and let's bring money to the table, but let's not bring the person's relationship in an exploitive way. That that right. person must be absolutely taken care of in all their needs and their human needs. And what are you hoping to contribute at the Impact Economy Summit and to the citizens' media? Well, well, the, the wealth stewardship model is one thing we're offering, but on a deeper level, the I3 Co-op and the Citizens Media Project is really trying, to, their, the ultimate goal is similar to Village Lab. We want to affect projects on the ground. We want to go into communities and bring sustainable practices. Um, and so we have a systematic framework and process to do that. Right? What's what we've been developing is a way to to identify uh, best practices. We don't even like the word best practices because it, it implies that there's a best for everyone. More, we, we, we really should talk about culturally and climate specific practices. Um, but we, we are a repository and a generator of, of practices in these ways. And so we've got a framework and a process we can offer to that. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you. Uh, Jeff Clearwater. And I'd also I like to acknowledge it. the work of Fernanda Ibarra in Village Lab. Thank you very much. Yes, thank right. you. Bye-bye.